Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Anton Off2 as usual and today it's time to return to the winners of the 1k subscriber replay contest. Now this here is Rochi in his IS-6 on Corellia and this is a standard battle. Now I'm not quite sure about this but I think that you Rochi once already participated in one of my videos in a subscriber spotlight video. I'm not sure so if I'm mistaken about this please let me know in the comments but uh, yeah, uh, thanks a lot for sending this game in. It, it is a really awesome game. So please stay tuned and have a look how Rochi plays his IS-6 like an absolute boss. So he's heading out for the left flank on Corellia, which I would do in my IS-60. This is the, the place to go if you're a heavy tank on Corellia. But um, he's really not messing around, Rochi. He's just positioning himself right in the open here, angling his armor against all these lower tier tanks. And I mean, Roach is in a really good matchup here. It's a tier 8 game with lots of tier 7 and 8 uh, and 6 tanks. Fair enough, there are some tier 8 tanks as well. But, uh, you know, really the IS 6 probably is one of the strongest tanks in game against lower tier vehicles. Like, for example, that Tiger 1 there, who just learned to fear the 122mm Russian gun. So, he's just side scraping against all those tier 6 and 7 tanks. And there's a T 34 2 over there, by the way, too. And the KV 1S just appeared. But that doesn't scare Rochi here because he's side scraping like a boss behind this rock. So you can see all the shots bouncing off. And the Tigers reduced to 1 HP. He. That was quite weird there, did he? <laughs> he just finished off that. Oh, I get it. That M6 actually wasn't spotted, so he was actually firing at the KP1S, but without uh, wanting to do so, he blind shot the M6. At least that's what I think happened. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. But uh, anyway, so that was quite funny. He got three kills in rapid succession there. And actually, those are only three kills in this team, so the score's 3 to 1 now. And uh, fair enough, uh, lower tier kills, I mean, the Tiger, an M6, and an AMX. But still, like, for example, Tiger 1's got an amazing top gun. And you really do not want to let that gun, you know, dominate the battle, so it's an important vehicle to take out. Not nope, there, T44 managed to slip past him right at the beginning of the match and secure the hill. So Rochi is going to uh, root this guy out, hopefully. But the T-44 is not stupid. He realises that he will be absolutely overpowered if he waits here. So he's retreating and only exposing his turret and Rochi bounces. But uh, he's not letting himself be demoralised. So he's just pushing on, trying to get this kill on the T-44. And really what the T-44 was doing there was quite stupid. Because if he would angle his frontal arm against Rochi, there's quite a good chance he would bounce. But the way he presented the side there really was not very strong play. So he gets taken out, uh, but not by Rochi. But now Rochi sees this KV-1S and he thinks, oh, lunch. <laughs> so he's going in and um, if he gets a very high roll, he should be able to finish off that KV-1S, but it's fairly unlikely. So let's see how he's going to handle this guy. Hello, Mr. KV-1S. One shot in, high roll, but not quite high enough. But, you know, we're in Russia. <laughs> so he picks up his fourth kill there. And he got four from five kills in his entire team. The T-150 being the only one who uh, got another kill on the T-44. So, uh, yeah, nice ram kill there. And now Rochi realizes that his allies in the north of the map are crumbling. So he has to retreat to his base to defend. I'm quickly going to speed up the gameplay a bit here because it takes quite a while for him to get to the base. So I'm going to show this to you in double speed. Now, one thing you may notice is that the IS-6 has actually got quite a poor ammo loadout uh, because it cannot carry very many shells. And Rochi uh, is carrying 10 armor-piercing composite ridge shells, um, which, uh, I mean, that's an absolutely viable choice. I carry quite a lot of APCR shells too if I drive my IS-6 just because the pen of 175 for AP rounds is not that great. But uh, you can see him loading the APCR rounds now. And uh, he's got 9 AP rounds and 10 APCR rounds. And really that's one of the major problems with the IS-6. Is just that 
you haven't got all that much ammo and you really have to you cannot really afford to waste shots if you have to carry a game like Roachy has to do here because just in a matter of a few seconds or maybe even two minutes his team was just absolutely decimated and the score 7 to 9 now and was 5 to 1 a few minutes ago so uh, Roachy really has to fight here to secure the victory so he's in his base and oh there's the ARL V39 so he's quite a good target for the IS-6 because he's got low armor, a bit of a waste of an APCR shell there if you ask me, but you never know. So <laughs> he gets a second ram kill and that's really good now because he can take a shot at the 110. That was a really skilled shot taking off the rear drive wheel of that 110 there, but unfortunately the 110 uses a repair kit, but at least we know now that he can't repair again. Now, that was quite sad, he could have hit the front drive wheel of a 110 there, but he jerked to the side a bit, and maybe he was excited, I'm not sure, but he could have really gotten the 110 perma trap there, and just decimated him. Uh, the way he played it now, I mean, he's going to get the kill, hopefully, but he has to expose his rear to the snipers that are lurking up there between the rocks. So, he gets quite a lot of his health taken away, but in turn he secures Top Gun, and uh, pulls the scores back to nearly even, it's 9-10 now. So, I'm going to accelerate the gameplay a bit again, because he sees now that there are two enemy tanks advancing around the south, so he's going to prepare to uh, yeah, make a standoff here. Now, he's positioning right here beside these rocks, which gives him a good overview of the entire valley here. And now he has to wait. So I'm going to make it a bit faster even still, because um, <laughs> really nothing happens. So, um, yeah, he's basically just waiting here. And not all that much happens. I mean, he's got an IS-3 with him on his right flank. And now he decides to reposition and uh, to go to this place here where he hopes to be able to catch the Louvre and the T-34-2 when they advance along here. So he's got GW Panther with him. The GW Panther is actually in quite a risky position because it could have... And oh, there's the Louvre. So what I wanted to say is that the Louvre could maybe spot him. But it looks like the Louvre is focusing on Roachy at the moment and not on the GW Panther. Now the IS-3 goes down, the uh, enemy Nashorn got him. So Roachy tries to get a track shot into the Louvre, which works, but sadly um, he doesn't get any damage in. So he's got an IS-3 on his flank. Now at this point, really, firing APCR is kind of quite a waste because he could easily penetrate the Louvre with AP ammo, even on the front, not even to mention the side armor. But I think probably Roachy's just kind of a bit stressed at the moment, uh, very excited, so probably he just forgets to change his ammo. And this is a real shame because the APC armor would be more important against, say, for example, the KB-3, which you'll have to face off after he opens and takes up his Lover. So he bounces his last APC round off the Lover's gun mount, and now he's down to AP again. So the T-34-2 is luckily dead. So he gets another good shot to the side of the Lover, retreats, reloading. And really at the moment the odds are kind of stacked against Rochi here because he's alone in the tier 8 tank against the tier 7 tank, Hanati, and two tier 6 vehicles. Fair enough, he's got the GW Panther on his team and he took out the Lover so that made the odds a bit better but still things are not really looking that good. So uh, just going to quickly speed it up a bit again till he progresses up the slope. Now, he's telling the GW Panther to go down to the west on the zero line to uh, because he knows that that flank's clear, because he knows that the VK and the Nashorn are up in the north and the KV-3 is in the centre, so probably that's the, places, uh, the safest place for the GW Panther to go at the moment. So that, again, shows some really good teamwork, and that's uh, something that's worth a lot in games like this. So he's going to try to get into cover behind these rocks, and he's advancing, but then the KB-3 is spotted again. So, uh, he aims. Quite long aiming time with this gun. And gets a shot in. Quite lucky penetration on the front of the KB-3. The KB-3 seems to be quite an amateur. Because he didn't angle his armor. Rochi got spotted there, so the KB-3 definitely knows where Rochi is. But luckily Rochi has got to bush him between himself and the KB-3. So that gives him the camouflage advantage. Now, he's really trying to work with his gun depression here, which is quite bad with 6 degrees. 
so that's giving him some difficulties. And he decides to advance up the slope as the KV3 has lost his position. He knows that because he can't see the KV3 either. And um, that means he's kind of trying to surprise the KV3 now. Or maybe he realizes that he can't win a frontal engagement against the KV3 and is going for the Nashorn. And he just, the Nashorn pops up right there in front of him. So he gets a very big shot into the Nashorn. And the Nashorn is retreating for all the good it's doing him because the GW Panther gets the kill. And that's a real shame because Roach is in for a Radley Walters medal. And the GW Panther takes it away from him. But, you know, uh, it's really hard to complain. The GW Panther's doing a good job. He gets another really lucky shot in through the lower glaciers for KV3. I mean, you know, lucky. Uh, he knew where to aim. And the, the luck that it's part two. So, he gets another nice shot into the side. Now he's in a really sticky situation here. Because he can't get take another shot from that KV3. So, he side scrapes very, very well. Reverses out of cover. And puts it great finishing shot in, securing the Radley Walters medal and really stacking the odds in his favour because it's a GW Panther and the VK on the enemy team against Rochi with 8 kills and the GW Panther with 2 on his own team but um, he's kind of running out of time here because he's only got 1.5 minutes left or not even 1.5 minutes uh, and he really has to get to the enemy base at this point now, <laughs> the enemy Nashorn is kind of going ballistic and shot at this point. Um, so there's kind of quite a diss battle going on there. Um, oh yeah, he's using quite strong language. Um, and, oh, it's down to under a minute now, so Roachy has to really hurry up. Um, Come on, can he make it? I mean, he doesn't exactly know where the VK is, and probably the enemy RT will be in the spawn. He hasn't got time enough to cap anymore, because it takes more than... Uh, it takes one and a half minutes to cap fully on your own in a standard game. So the IS-6, uh, no, actually the Nashorn, calls the IS-6 uh, Roachy here. A gold noob. Now, <laughs> I mean, I don't know since when you need gold ammo to take out a Nashorn. Okay, fair enough, Roachy used some gold ammo, but, uh, you know, he basically used all his ammo he has, except for two rounds, so, and, okay, so, only 17 minutes left, 16, 15 minutes, quarter of a minute, uh, second, sorry, and, oh, there's a GW Panther, and, oh my god, that, that is so sad, the GW Panther was a camping little bitch, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, uh, credit where credit due, that GW Panther knew where Roachy would come, and uh, he was just pre-aimed at the position where Rochi would appear and made the most of it. And the GW Panther played quite strongly there. So uh, really that was kind of Rochi's fault because he should have advanced from a different angle. But really that wasn't possible because he didn't have time. He really had to make sure to hopefully pick up the kills before the game was over. So really Rochi did all he could in that game. It wasn't enough because the odds were just stacked against him too much. But uh, still, you played an amazing game, Rochi. This is one of the most fun games I've ever watched in World of Tanks, probably. Uh, getting eight kills, and uh, it's a real shame that this ended up being a draw with a time limit expiring. But luckily for you, Rochi, you picked up some really cool medals that allowed you to get the experience coefficient of a victory in the end anyway. So let's have a look what those medals were exactly. Okay, so here are the results, and boy, what a match that was. Rochi managed to get 199,050 credits. So that's nearly 200,000 credits. That's just ridiculously much. I mean, I, that, I actually think that wasn't without any specials going on. I, I'm pretty sure that was just the pure amount of credits that he got in that game. I mean, obviously he had premium account, but still, this is just a massive result. And he got 3,079 experience, and that also was of a premium account. That was his ace tanker badge and his IS-6, a well-deserved, I'd say, a Radley Walters medal and a top gun. And thanks to getting this Radley Walters medal, he was able to get a literally amazing experience score of 2,053. That's just absolutely ridiculous. He picked up 8 kills, allowing him to get the Radley Walters medal, and over 7,000 damage. I mean, if we take a look at this, he got 2,000 experience, right? The second best player on his team got 455. So he got 5 times as much, over 5 times as much experience as the second best player on his team. 
I'm I probably I'm not gonna uh, do the maths for you now, but I'm quite sure that he himself got more experience than all his teammates added up together. But I'm not sure about that. Maybe one of you guys can figure it out in the comments. I'm not gonna do it now. But I mean, even on the enemy team, the best player only had half as much experience as Rochi. So he played an absolutely blinding game. He fired 28 shots, of which 26 connected and 22 penned, which is actually a really good ratio for the uh, kind of gun characteristics on the IS-6 uh, 122 mil gun. He got 7k damage, that is amazing on a tier 6 premium tank. He received 18 hits, which only 6 penetrated, so 12 ricocheted, and that shows just the amazing armor of the IS-6. He received two slash damaging hits and the potential damage of nearly 6,000, 5,780 to be more exact. And <laughs> that's nearly as much potential damage as damage he dealt out. And he dealt out a lot of damage. So that is a really good score there too and shows that Rochi really knows how to use the armor of IS-6. He spotted four enemies, damaged 11, which is nearly the entire enemy team, destroyed eight and picked up 1644 assistance damage too which is actually not that easy to do in the IS-6 because uh, it's kind of got quite underwhelming view range. That game took 15 minutes so it was a draw because the time ran out. I really think Rochi would have deserved to win this game but still you know thanks to getting the Radley Walters medal he got the experience, co uh, the experience and credit coefficient of the victory and that allows him to get second prize in my replay competition Believe me, it was really close, he would have nearly gotten the first prize, but still to perform this well in a premium tank at tier 8 is just, you know, really impressive. And I'll be contacting you in an email shortly and you'll be able to decide whether you want to have uh, 2,500 gold or a tier 6 premium tank of your choice. I'm going to give that prize gladly to you because you really played an amazing game. It was really entertaining to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, consider rating it down below or subbing to my channel. And uh, stay tuned because I've got the first prize coming up soon as well. And um, yeah, I hope you appreciated this video. And thanks a lot for sending it in again, Rochi. Uh, you really contributed to the channel. So yeah, thanks for watching as usual and I hope I see you soon. Bye-bye.